Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Rima Sala, an assistant clinical professor at the Yale Child Study Center and former deputy executive director of UNICEF. Today, we'll talk with Professor Sala about her recently published book, Pathways to Peace, the Transformative Power of Women and Children, that she worked on in collaboration with Dr. James Lechman and Catherine Panterbrick from Yale University. Welcome, Professor Sala. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be with you Thank this you. afternoon. Let's begin with an overview of the book. Tell us about it. Okay, the book is uh, Pathways to Peace, the Transformative Power of Families and Children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it all started in uh, 2013 mm -hmm. when Ernest Trugman, uh, which is a forum in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, convened a meeting to review a very important premise. Do the, way we the ways we raise our children have an impact on peace or help to promote peace? Mm -hmm. Also, another question, can peaceful childhoods uh, create a culture of peace? Mm -hmm. And as you know, there is more and more evidence that the, how we invest in the early years of the child can have an impact in creating a culture of peace. Mm -hmm. And we thought by presenting this book, we can put our hands with the international community and contribute to the debate uh, on peace building, creating a culture of peace, mm -hmm. and particularly justice and peace in society. Okay. It also started with the journey of Mr. Lechman, mm -hmm. uh, J um, uh, Professor Lechman, who went to Turkey and met with uh, an organization, a non-governmental organization, Mother Child Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they had programs in early childhood deve development in all the country, in Turkey, in villages, in uh, cities, in, and within communities. And they saw, they realized that uh, early childhood development, the programs, had an impact in creating peace at home, mm -hmm. in the community, and at large. So they asked Professor Lechman, they wanted the scientific evidence. Okay. And it all started from there. Mm -hmm. Also, it started with the launch of a consortium on early childhood development that we launched at UNICEF in 2012, and also to join the forces of the international community to find answers and ways to really build a peaceful society. Mm -hmm. But not only peaceful, inclusive. And that is why it's important. So we thought we will bring you know, the evidence of knowledge, the evidence, and inform that debate. Mm -hmm. And it was very timely. Why is it timely? Because of the situation in the world. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions of children are living in an environment of violence. And in the book, uh, it categorizes uh, violence in two ways. We have the direct violence like when children have uh, uh, you know, abuse and all the war, the direct impact of war, but also there is the structural violence, which is very important, which is uh, poverty, which is marginalization, mm -hmm. which is oppression, and also rights and children's rights that are not conformed to the Convention on the Rights of the Child. So we thought that, we, that our contribution will help millions and millions of children. Okay. Now there are a number of contributors to the book. So you've, you've collected um, research from a number of people. Can you tell us um, who are some of the contributors and yeah. what were some of their findings? We had more than 40 contributors and they came from all uh, sciences. So it is multidisciplinary mm -hmm. and that is the strength and mm -hmm. the power of it. And uh, so we had, for example, anthropologists, sociologists, biologists, neurobiologists, and also people from peace building and also from religious studies. Mm -hmm. So it was so important that con they had to answer questions. For example, does uh, human biological development impact peace. And this is something new. This is mm -hmm. groundbreaking science that is very important. And does it? Yes, yes. it does. It does. Because the, the, some of the findings uh, say that vi when children are exposed to violence, 
is detrimental to their development. Mm -hmm. They will not develop to their full potential. Okay. And also it affects the brain, how important the brain development in the early years mm -hmm. of life. And then all their experience in the first year even of life will determine the capacity of the brain for life. And also how important it is to, to build a good brain. You have to have good care child caring, you have to have also uh, in, uh, like involve uh, parents in uh, so that they, in, they put uh, cognitive and uh, emotional and all these aspects of the mm -hmm. are very important. But also health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So it is a holistic approach. But the most important thing is safety and protection. Mm -hmm. How to create loving environment, how to create environments that care for children and particularly in times of war and conflict mm -hmm. or where children are refugees and, uh, and displaced. And also how important is, for example, bonding. And uh, this is very important. Mm -hmm. And the role of uh, parents and good parenting, because as I said, this will uh, you know, have a great impact uh, on, on the brain mm -hmm. and can be transmitted across generations. And this is uh, what we say the study of epigenetics, mm -hmm. which is also groundbreaking. Uh, so, uh, so in this, we know that good early childhood care, positive parenting has a great impact on children and particularly on their future lives. Mm -hmm. And this was through research that was done by the contributors to yes, the book. Yes, by the contributors. Okay. And we had the other researchers, for example, uh, other contribution to the book. What are the good interventions? What are, so they showcased interventions from United States to Nigeria, mm -hmm. to South Africa, to Lebanon, to Turkey, that show how can good interventions also create an environment of peace. Can you speak to some of the specific interventions that were done? Yes, sure. For example, I spoke about a little bit the interventions in Turkey, uh, but also interventions, for example, uh, in uh, Lebanon, where uh, we uh, work with uh, uh, mothers in Palestinian refugee camps. Mm -hmm. And as you see, as you know, the environment in a camp are not always positive. Right. So working with mothers had a great impact on the relationship with their children, mm -hmm. and not only with the relationship with the children, but also the centers had an impact in creating cohesion in the community. Okay, so when you say it's important for you know mothers to work with their children, or what specifically was being done with the women in the camps to foster that? Yeah, for example, they followed a few weeks of uh, training mm -hmm. and uh, talking and, and working with them, how to deal with the child, how when their child is violent, what should they do? Mm -hmm. uh, do they spank their children or not? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, you spank children, so they learn that this is not the, the best way, uh, how to listen to their children. Mm -hmm. So all this has really a great impact as I said, uh, in the family, but also in a community that is not very positive. Right, right. And also in South Africa, for example, because this will help when they mothers meet, when parents meet, the role of the father is very important. When they meet in the centers, they transcend the divide of religious divide, ethnic divide, because they become mothers together mm -hmm. and fathers together to take care of their children. Right, um, so the, the last chapter of the book talks about effective policies and programs that can um, alleviate violence and promote peace. Can you talk uh, in specifics about some of those? Yes, the, 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 the most important thing is how to transmit the science. Because mm -hmm. if we want science and keep it in the libraries, it's not, uh, it's, it's not important. Right. It's how you transmit it. How can communities, how can governments, how can the United Nations, you know, benefit from this? So we have to transmit it so, if, so that we have policies, so that governments also, for example, uh, realize that early childhood development 
are important and they should be owned by the countries, mm -hmm. should be owned by the by the government. They should put budgets for uh, you know for them mm -hmm. because sometimes they think, especially if countries are poorer, they will try to put budgets for other things, but not for early childhood development. Mm -hmm. But I think sharing this information and in this chapter we have recommendations at all levels, recommendation for governments, for example. We have recommendations for the United Nations and so member states of the United Nations who are working on peace and security have to know that early childhood development should be part of all the peace building programs. And on the community level, it's very important that, for example, mayors and local governments, for example, we have examples of mayors for children or mayors for the rights of children in Italy, in Japan, and in other places. Mm -hmm. How can we have mayors for peace? How can we have mayors for early childhood development? Mm -hmm. So what we are doing and what is the most important goal for us is to have a resolution at the United Nations, mm -hmm. a resolution that states that families and children are important agents of change and important agents of peace. So the resolution, we are working on it to be adopted next year, mm -hmm. then it can, because a resolution at the United Nations can mobilize all member states, 193 member states. Mm -hmm. But also the role of uh, non-governmental organizations is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes when, uh, uh, non -gover when governments cannot do, cannot implement everything, you know, civil society is important to help. And we have examples of programs in many countries that are led by non-governmental organizations. Mm -hmm. But most important how to share this knowledge and the translator of this knowledge is very important. How to give the, how to guide communities, how to guide governments is very important mm -hmm. and also very important in respecting cultures. I was going to ask, yes. cultures must play a large role yes. from country to country yes. and it's I think very mm. important to it, recognize that in yes. terms of trying to implement yes. Um, yeah. For instance, can you uh, have you any experience with? Um, can you cite any specific examples of how culture will come into play in any particular country? Yeah, uh, for example, even if I uh, go back to the culture, the, the the in Lebanon, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the the culture is very important because you cannot tell mothers that all what they were doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to bring it in a way uh, to guide them in the new way mm -hmm. in the and to translate this groundbreaking science to them in a language that they understand and that is not against for example their culture mm -hmm. and their and their traditions of course there are sometimes harmful tradition practices that little by little step by step as also with my, my work in unicef we did uh, so step by step you can guide them to get rid of those uh, traditions. Mm -hmm. For example, of spanking a child, of uh, all these traditions. Mm -hmm. So it's important, and we have a whole chapter that talks about culture. And also we have a chapter, we have also involvement, as I said, from religious, inter-religious dialogue, because in a community you have everybody and you have to involve everybody. Right. You have to involve the leaders, the local governments, you have traditional chiefs, religious leaders, civil society itself, and mother, fathers, and the, all the caregivers, the teachers, for example, the pediatricians in, the, in that mm -hmm. community. So how to join forces together to bring peace mm -hmm. through the transformative power of early childhood development. Right. So if there is one thing that you would like the readers to take from the book, what would it be? That families and children are not only victims in times of war and conflicts, are not only victims to violence, but are agents of change through the transformative power of early childhood development. Thank you so much for being here with us and Thank sharing you. your work. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. And just to say that it was a great pleasure and honor to work with the two other professors, uh, Professor uh, Leckman, James Leckman, and Catherine Panterbrick, who are also known for their science. Yes. But, but for example, Professor 
panther break for her uh, work on resilience mm -hmm. and we have a lot in our book on re resilience, how to build resilience of communities and, uh, and families, especially in times of conflict. And of course, all the work of Professor Lechman mm -hmm. on childhood. Very good, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you. For more information about Professor Sala and her research, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.